Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. In the last episode, what we did, we created all of our prefabs, coupled with the corresponding animations, and we just added a box collider to them and threw them all in our prefabs folder. Now in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at creating our player's input controls. Now that's going to include moving left and right and shooting our laser. Very simple stuff to start off with. So we'll go ahead and in our scripts folder, we'll create a new C-sharp script and we'll just call this player and open this up in Visual Studio. Just while this is loading, I just want to say to everyone, I hope you're all keeping safe out there during this outbreak. And if you're watching this in a few years time and you've no idea what I'm going on about, this is in regards to the coronavirus, the uh, COVID-19 outbreak in 2020. Okay, so we have our default player script. So we'll start off with adding in a few fields. So what are we going to want? Well, first of all, we're going to want a public game object. And we'll call this bullet prefab. So we're going to assign that inside the inspector. So we'll leave that as public. We're also going to want to limit our player's movements left and right. Go away, I don't want to update you just yet. So to do this, we're going to need two positions, a max left and a max right. Now, we'll keep these as private because one, we're not going to need them outside of this script, and two, we don't need to assign them inside the inspector. We're also going to mark these as constant, const, because we're never going to change it. Our maximum left and maximum right are going to be universal regardless of platform, whatever. So, constant. These are going to be floats and I'm going to call these max left and another private const float max right. I just like to have constants in full capitals just so I know when I'm reading through my script later on that I can't actually amend those. That's just personal preference. They don't need to be in all caps. And we'll just set these to zero to get rid of those errors. Whenever you're working with a constant, you have to initialize this or you'll get an error. So let's work out what our maximum left and maximum rights should be. So to do this, all we need to do is drag in, we'll just use a player ship, we'll put that in right in the center, and we'll drag this over to our right hand side. And we can see our position on the X is positive 2.5 when we're all the way over to the right hand side. So that should mean negative 2.5 will match on the other side. And it does. So we can use those two values as our maximums. So our max left would be minus 2.5 and our max right would be positive 2.5. We're also going to want to put in a speed value. Now, a little bit of a spoiler later on, we're going to be creating a scriptable object to hold quite a few of our ship's values. So just for now, I'm going to put in a private float speed and we'll set that to three. Like I said, we'll be removing that later on. This is just so we can get our script working today. And that should be all we need for our fields for now. Uh, we don't need the start method again for now. Uh, but we'll jump into the update. Now, we're actually going to be wanting this to be released on Android. Uh, so we're going to need touchscreen functionality. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use buttons. But while we're inside the editor, I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to add in some platform dependent code. And if you've seen my other little tip video on this, you'll know about this. This is done by adding a hash if... And what we're going to want to do, if we're inside the Unity editor, we want this code to run, or compile, should I say. So now that we can guarantee that we're inside the editor, we can use our keyboard inputs. And we're just going to use some really basic inputs. So input.getKey. And the key code that we want to get is the A key. It'd help if I actually put this in an if statement. So... If we actually press the key, all we want to do, we want to do transform dot 
translate, we're going to use vector2 dot left. And basically all vector2 dot left is, is a vector2 variable with the values minus 1 on the x and 0 on the y. So we can use this to quickly move left, right, up and down. And we're going to want to times that by time dot, if I can spell, time dot delta time. Why is nothing working for me today? Delta time. There we go. And then once more by speed. So the reason we times this by time dot delta time is to keep our movement speeds constant rather than if we have frame rate drops, we don't want any jagged movements. It also allows us to keep all the movements in our game universal if we use this on all of our objects. So then what we can go ahead and do, we can just copy that. We'll change this to if we press the D key, we want to move right. So now if we save that, we pop back over into Unity. We'll put our player's ship back where it needs to go. So that'll be zero and where do we want it on the Y? We'll say about there. Okay, so if we go ahead and attach our player script and play the game, we should be able to move left and right. And we can. But as you can see, we can go further than our bounds. So the quick way to do this is inside of our if statements, we want to make sure that if the A key is being pressed and our transform.position.x is greater than our max left position. And exactly the same, transform.position.x is less than max right. So now if we pop back into Unity and let this compile, with those little changes we should see that we can no longer go past our boundaries and we can't. We stopped at exactly, or near enough exactly, negative 2.5 and positive 2.5. So that's the movement done for now anyway. Like I said, I'm going to be adding in functionality for mobile. We'll be moving the player with buttons by the time we release the game. This is just so we can actually test our movements out and our shooting out inside the inspector. Speaking of shooting, let's get shooting. So let's pop back over into our player script. Now for our shooting script, we're actually going to use a core routine. And the reason we're going to use a core routine is we want to cool down in between each shot so the player can't spam the space key or the button on the mobile and fire continuously. And by using a core routine, we can actually utilize the method wait for seconds. So we're going to need to be using system.collections because we now want a private IEnumerator that we'll call shoot. So what do we actually want to do when we shoot? Well, we're going to want to make sure that we keep a copy of a boolean as to whether or not we are currently running our shoot core routine. So we can create a private bool is shooting, and by default that will be false. So first things first, we'll set is shooting equal to true. And then just so we don't forget, right at the very end, we're going to set it back to false. And this is going to be very simple. All we're going to want to do is we're going to want to instantiate a copy of our bullet prefab. We're going to instantiate it at transform.position of our player's ship. And we're going to use quaternion.identity because we don't want to give it a custom rotation. We'll just let it spawn in with its default prefab rotation. And then this being a core routine, we do need a yield statement. So we'll add that in right here. I'm going to yield, return, oops, return new. And there's the wait for seconds method that I said before. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to wait for a set amount of time before we can shoot again. So we need a cooldown variable. And again, this is going to be inside of our... A ship's data scriptable object that we'll create later but just for now we'll create a private float cooldown and we'll set this to 
0.5. So we'll have to wait half a second in between every shot. So inside our wait for seconds, we can add our cooldown. And then back in our update, we can check if input dot get key, key code space, and we are not, oops, and we are not shooting. We'll start the core routine, shoot. And it should be as simple as that. So currently we have a player moving lefty, we press the A key, righty, we press the D key, and shooting whenever we press the space key. And our shoot is delayed by half a second in between every bullet that's fired. So we can pop back over, and as we can see, we need a bullet prefab inside of our player script now. Luckily, we already created this. This is our friendly bullet. So we can drag this out of our project folder into our player script, play the game. You can see we move left and right. If we press space, we instantiate one of our bullets. Currently though, our bullets don't actually do anything. So let's give those their own script. So we'll pop down to our scripts, add a new C-sharp script, and we'll just call this friendly bullet. Open this up. And again, this is gonna be an extremely simple script. All we're gonna need is a private float of speed. That's how quickly the bullet's gonna be traveling. We'll set this to 10 relatively quickly. Inside of our update, we're just gonna to wanna to transform.translate. We're gonna use vector2.up up this time because our play is right at the bottom. We wanna shoot upwards times time dot delta time. You're gonna remember all this. And once again, times it by our speed. And then a little bit later on, we're gonna need a private void on collision enter 2D. And that's gonna detect when our bullet hits one of the enemies. But for now, this should work. So if we pop over into Unity, load up our bullet prefab, where are we, friendly bullet, and drag and drop friendly bullet onto there. Now if we play the game and shoot, we should see that our bullets go upwards, and they do. But we can see that they don't disappear. They're gonna stay indefinitely and they're gonna clog up our project. So how can we fix this? Well, the quick and easy way to fix this, we'll create one more script, Actually, we'll create a folder first, and we'll call this Utilities. And then inside of Utilities, we'll create one more script, and we'll call this Destroy After Seconds. Open this up in Visual Studio, and we're gonna to wanna to make this reusable, so we'll create a public float seconds, and all we're gonna to wanna to do inside of our start method we're going to want to destroy whatever object this is attached to. So destroy the game object, comma, and then we'll pass in our seconds. So now we can see this working very quickly. If we pop back over into Unity, load up our friendly bullet, and drag and drop our destroy after seconds onto the object. And if we destroy this after one second, we should be able to play the game, fire the bullet, it should go off screen, and then we can see that it destroys itself after it's reached the edge of the screen. Now what we can do, we can just make that a little bit better just in case uh, some of the devices that we're running on are quite large. Uh, we'll just up that to two seconds, so it's gonna be well outside of the project view by the time it destroys itself. And just like that, we have a player that we can control very easily. Now we'll be building on this script later on in the series by bolting on a few extra methods that we need as and when we need them. Now in the next tutorial, I'm gonna go into creating the enemies, the aliens, and we're also gonna be creating a group of aliens that move in sequence. So make sure you tune in to the next video and check that out, and I'll see you over there.